cavalry has dominated open field fighting for what feels like years now in rise of kingdom so today i'm bringing you my updated guide for cavalry for free to play and new players and we're going to go over the best civilization for cavalry and we're also going to go over the best order with which you should invest in legendary commanders and the best progression for your equipment here in rise of kingdoms but first what's going on guys cheers just wanted to remind you guys again i am doing a giveaway for the month of august there's about three weeks left at the time of recording this all you have to do is click the link in the description and follow me on all my social media accounts that is literally it and one lucky subscriber is going to win a hundred dollars i also heard if you like this video you get better luck that's not technically true but you might as well do it just in case you know now let's jump into the best civilization for cavalry now if you watched my guide for archers or for infantry then this area is going to be pretty familiar to you but for free to play players low spenders new players and for just players in general in the off season Germany is going to be the best civilization for you and luckily for this video they are also a cavalry civilization you get five percent cavalry attack five percent troop training speed which is beautiful in between kvks you just passively get more troops and the action point recovery is the number one reason why free to play players and new players should be playing as Germany okay the Teutonic Knight is a very powerful special unit for cavalry it's a small micro optimization to be honest with you guys as well as the cavalry attack but in general this is a very very solid choice and you're mainly picking it for the action point recovery once you enter into kvk and you're doing significant amounts of pvp combat i'm going to recommend switching your civilization to the ottoman empire now we talked about this especially in the archer video but really the stats here are just super good the march speed applies to any troop type so even though they have a special unit for archers the march speed here is beautiful for your already fast cavalry and the skill damage by five percent here is incredible okay i know there's archer health you're gonna have to ignore that for now and just trust me that the five percent skill damage on some of the commanders we're going to talk about in this video is absolutely insane so most players in pvp should be playing as ottoman empire even if they are cavalry players now let's jump over to the tier maker so we can go over the best order with which you should be investing in your legendary commanders and if you've seen the other videos of this series this is going to sound a little bit redundant to you but the number one thing you should invest in is a 5111 richard the first this is for his healing factor on his active skill he's generally very tanky he applies a very strong debuff with that active skill in an aoe fashion and richard is going to help you in pretty much every pve event where you need a tank and for 60 sculptures 10 to summon 50 for the first skill he is the best budget build you can do for a legendary tank he is also really good for chaining barbarians out in the world because you're going to be able to pair him with Song Ye for the circular aoe and that's going to get you a bunch of free barbarian kills which means free arrows of resistance free gems and a bunch of free experience as well as everything else that comes along with that and obviously that means that your second investment is going to be an expertise Isong A. now i know that this is a cavalry guide but Isong A is just such a vanilla aoe machine that pretty much every player should be expertise in Isong A, in my opinion even though in the late game he does sort of get outclassed by Zhuge Liang the amount of value that you're going to get out of Isong A in the early game is just exceptional chaining barbarians and in the late game you could pair him with somebody else to just get a bunch of AoE damage out on the field and that is crucial for PvP combat from there you should be hoarding your sculptures until kvk3 and I know that that is like insane because that happens after like seven eight months but hear me out the commanders in this game just get so much better in kvk3 and you only have a limited amount of legendary commander sculptures now in season two you will see Saladin appear on the wheel of fortune this is a pretty recent change he used to be a mightiest governor commander and if you look in the game right now it actually still says that he's a mightiest governor our commander so um Lilith you probably want to change that because it's kind of confusing for new players now historically speaking Saladin used to be one of the best commanders in the game to invest in for free to play players and unfortunately I just don't really think that that's the case anymore most people would use him at 5551 because his last skill is useless and his expertise is not that good and honestly I used to run him all the time but his March speed debuff here is it's a nice long time five seconds but there's a lot of March speed reduction on newer cavalry commanders as well that just do way more damage factor and have something more useful than healing effect reduction okay uh his stats here are really nice they're still really solid and hold up really strong uh but again he's just 
so easily power crept in the late game that I just can't tell you to invest in Saladin in 2023 unless they double relic him and he becomes insane because we already know that he has a relic in rise of kingdoms right now but with only one relic upgrade it's a little bit of march speed and attack i mean you would need to like triple these numbers for me to say yes you probably should consider using saladin again so will they do that probably not i could see it maybe going to 25 percent and 20 at best right or 25 percent and 15 i don't know um if that's the case maybe you could argue saladin might be good as a third cavalry march in kvk3 but we'll get to that later so for now just understand that even though it was nice of them to put saladin on the wheel of fortune so that way it's easier to obtain uh, for free to play players it's still not going to make him something that you should be investing in so i'm going to say just go ahead and pass on him unless you are a whale if you're a whale then max spin the wheel and you'll have a 5551 five, five, saladin that's just good to go or you could expertise him if you're an absolute lunatic and feel like wasting your sculptures besides saladin for the giga chad whales there's really nothing that i would recommend a free to play player or a new player invest in in kvk2 as a cavalry player so really that just means you're going to be hoarding all of your sculptures uh, until kvk3 and season of conquest so that way you'll have enough to invest in some of the ultra powerful commanders that you'll have access to okay season of conquest is the current content in rise of kingdoms so you will have access to every commander and in your kvk2 i want you to focus on just getting tier 5 units uh, focus on using your troops to reinforce rallies and reinforce garrisons and that's pretty much it you could do a little bit of open field fighting um really in kvk1 you can consider using something like belisarius and something like uh where is he by bars i actually really like by bars as an epic commander his uh five target aoe is really nice for an epic commander um but realistically like this is kind of the only epic pairing that you can consider in season one of kvk and besides that you're just gonna have to be patient okay you're just gonna have to be patient and wait till kvk three and season of conquest and when you do you are going to have the most insane wheel of fortune that you've ever seen in your life because it's going to have william it's going to have nevsky it's going to have joan of arc and it's going to have hua chi Ming, and it's even going to have zhang yu as well which is absolutely insane like this cavalry lineup is amazing for uh, for a wheel of fortune okay so what should you prioritize here okay first of all let's move richard down here okay he is your pve exclusive commander and we're going to move our YSG down here because we're going to come back to him later. Okay. So once you get access to these five commanders, like how, how do you possibly pick between these? Okay. Well, the obvious answer is first you go with a Nevsky, then you go with Joan. Okay. Um, Nevsky is one of the commanders that you probably want to expertise, but because you're going to get access to literally five insanely good commanders, well, for an xy okay xy is still good we're gonna talk about him I, i've been mean to xy lately but we're gonna talk about him okay uh but you're gonna have access to some really powerful uh commanders you probably want to like at least summon all of them when you could get the access get the chance to right because like that wheel only com comes around once in a while but i would still say even though hua chi Bing just came into the game you probably want to start with nevsky regardless okay uh, his defense reduction is insane for swarming the target really high single target damage he gets a ton of stats here he gets attack health defense and even more health when eventually you expertise him plus he gains a really nice skill damage bonus okay so one thing that you can consider when you first go into kvk3 and season of conquest is that you can either expertise nevsky and then start to work on joan or you could do a 5551 nevsky and save some sculptures put them into joan of arc prime and then hopefully you get her in a good spot to where you can then come back and expertise nevsky with nevsky at five 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 one you're going to get pretty much all of the cavalry stats out of him that you really care the most about you're also going to deal more damage to surrounded targets and take less from them you're going to get a really nice 20 percent march speed bonus which is amazing for cavalry and the final skill here is actually very strong and you do want to get this eventually but you just can't guarantee that you're going to get it between the last two skills right so i mean it's up to you if you want to take them to five five one one and then try and get this last skill instead of the third skill that's up to you the last skill does give him 25 percent bonus skill damage and 35 percent additional skill damage after you cast your active skill which means for joan of arc prime it when you pair them together she's gonna hit like an absolute truck okay the synergy there is amazing 
that is going to be your first army that you want to build nevsky primary with joan of arc secondary okay with joan of arc now what you want to try to do is get a 5115 joan of arc and that's going to get you most of the value now i know i know that's way easier said than done that is almost impossible to do to be honest with you uh the probability of that happening is very very low but if you can get your hands on a 5515 joan of arc or something of that nature uh then you should be good to go now i do i do want you to get this last skill to five i think it's just so good the 100 probability of casting your active skill again basically every other skill cycle uh is super powerful okay it's a 2000 damage factor aoe really nice rage restoration damage bonus everything about this is insane and whenever you cast your active skill again you're gonna gain a rage bonus from the talents on nevsky okay because he's gonna be skill tree and with rejuvenate every time you cast a skill you gain 60 rage so by double casting with joan you actually get double the rage for that rejuvenate for her which is amazing so overall this is just an exceptionally good pairing now the minimum amount of sculptures that you could you know use to get this pair is like 570 sculptures plus the amount of sculptures it takes to summon them so 590 i believe which is a lot but when you consider that that's not even a full expertise amount like it takes more than that to expertise a single commander right uh that's a pretty good deal now again you can't guarantee the 5115 on jones so you got to just get lucky or somehow have skill resets i don't know if you can even get those as a free-to-play player you might be able to in some events but if you're going to use your skill reset resets on anybody if you're a low spender joan of arc should be the one 5115 would be the way to go and that is going to be uh, your first two investments here on our tier maker nevsky to 5551 joan of arc to 5115 or something close to that with the fourth skill being at five then you want to probably expertise your nevsky uh and then you can leave your joan of arc however you land it there whether it's 5515 or 5115 or some configuration in between there with the fourth skill at five you could probably just leave her there she is somebody that you can come back to eventually if you do want to expertise her but the amount of sculptures it's going to take to get that expertise uh is not nearly as valuable as unlocking some of the other commanders that you got access to from that wheel of fortune the next commander that i would recommend that you invest in is probably well it's hard to say right because i would say between hua Chibing and william i would say william is a more valuable commander as a whole in pvp uh, his AOE, while the damage factor isn't insane, his AOE March speed reduction is nice, which is another reason why Saladin kind of gets outclassed, right? Because this is 30%. It's for a shorter duration, but you can hit three targets with it, right? So that's really nice. Plus, attacked troops, extra skill damage buffs can't take effect. That is exceptionally good. And finally, the fourth skill here gives your allies 50 rage per second for three seconds. That's 150 rage. Incredible buff here. Incredible. The support on William is almost unparalleled he's one of the best open field commanders in the game still i absolutely love him the march speed here is nice bonus damage outside of territory is incredible uh william is one of the best commanders that i've ever invested in i do not regret him at all i even expertised him that's how good i think william actually is but he has the attack tree so as a primary commander he's not a great choice honestly he's really not now it's going to be up to you which one of these you want to invest in first um i think william as a commander is better but who do you pair him with you know if you don't have these two commanders you could try to do nevsky william and then pair joan with somebody else that you have for free like a mehmed right um he, if you have Mehmed at 5511 as a free to play player you could maybe try this army as a second cavalry army until you get your Hua Jibing. this is like you really don't want to run this configuration for too long it's not that it's bad it's just you don't want Joan primary because she just gets targeted too quickly uh no matter what she'll get targeted but you know having your actual icon floating around in the open field is just like you're begging to be targeted right because of how powerful she is so yeah you could run something like this if you want to go for William before Hua Jibing. so you know I, yeah I think this is a really solid two March setup in a pinch but but what you want to remember is that William is not somebody that you should expertise especially as a free-to-play player okay uh Williams skills here uh, we just went over them a little bit but the fourth skill the thing about this is the best part is actually not the defense but the rage per second and whether this skill is at one point or five points 
it's always going to give you 50 rage per second for three seconds and that's the best part about it okay so really you don't need this skill at five you get all the value from it from just being at one the expertise does give you 10 percent more attack and a little bit of extra bonus damage and stuff like that but really it's not worth it five 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 one just leave your william there save the sculptures you have plenty of other places that you can use those sculptures that are going to get you way more value than expertise and william uh don't be insane like i did run something like this and then as soon as you can you want to get what you bang you, you want to do that you want to really you don't really want to rely on uh Mehmed, especially because you probably don't even have a 5511 right unless you got really lucky so um keep that in mind the point is eventually you want to get your hands on what you that that's what you want to do and i am i i I'm, we're going to talk about this in a second okay um in my current kvk uh when i do expertise squad shipping i'm going to be running him with joan of arc secondary there's been a little bit of debate some discussion in the rise of kingdoms community as to whether or not it's better to do what shipping with joan of arc um or if you just leave joan of arc with your nevsky and do this now here is what i'm gonna say first of all when you do invest in what shipping, do you need to expertise him and i would say probably uh which definitely sucks uh you probably want to expertise him and you probably want to expertise him uh, uh, probably after your nevsky right so this is a pretty late game investment but yeah what Bing. first skill is really powerful second skill is solid third skill is okay uh it really only works for the first 15 seconds of battle and if it gets refreshed by the autumn wind effect when you expertise him fourth skill is actually nice i really like this fourth skill quite a bit um but the expertise is just gonna basically bring the whole kit together put a nice little bow on it okay uh that's kind of how i feel about this you definitely you kind of need all the skills right and that's what makes Huachi being not as important of an investment as nevsky or as joan because he does one thing exceptionally well but there's really no way to save sculptures with him at least in my opinion right if you want to run him a uh, 5551 five, five, and just you know go in and out of battle and micromanage that march for this buff here go for it be my guest right you still get a little bit of bonus here on this last skill you could also try to do a 5515 five, if you don't really care about the 850 rage requirement I mean after all that only happens for the, fir for the first 15 seconds of battle right so I mean yeah it's probably better to get this skill at uh five and you know micromanage the March I think that's going to be the best use less rage requirement for the active skill is really really good but the reason that I think that I'm going to be running Hua Che Bing with Joan of Arc is uh is for two things first of all um some players seem to think that this is going to mess up the skill cycle for Joan of Arc Prime and there's technically the probability that that could happen maybe once in a long battle but I don't it's not something that I'm making my decisions based on it's not something that's going to happen in 90 percent of battles right the reason people feel that way is because of uh Zhang Yu right Zhang Yu historically you wouldn't run Zhang Yu primary with Joan of Arc uh prime secondary because of the rage requirement here being 850 for Zhang Yu the difference though is that you basically uh, build up and, and your rage cycle gets faster and faster and faster and the rage requirement for Zhang Yu never changes and therefore you're popping off your active skills so fast that you actually would uh, at some point miss the timing for the fourth skill here on Joan of Arc so you'd be you'd pop basically uh, with Joan of Arc when you have a primary with the skill tree you can rely on this skill to uh, occur at least once every other skill cycle right and with Zhang Yu uh, I believe I don't have him but I'm pretty sure that based on testing we've seen that uh sometimes after you've gone through I think like six skill cycles um your rage is generating so fast if you have like a horn of fury and everything like that that you will eventually pop your active skill twice uh, or you could possibly pop your active skill twice within this cooldown um I think and that's what players are concerned about uh, the rage engine and the rage cycle on Hua Bing is not as fast as as Zhang Yu it's just not okay uh, and it's only for the first 15 seconds of battle after that he basically turns into a regular skill tree based commander so I'm really not worried about the timing issue with Joan of Arc okay I'm, I'm really not uh the reason that I'm pairing or I'm planning on pairing Hua Bing with Joan of Arc is because a Joan of Arc is a better commander than William and Nevsky is a better commander in my opinion as a complete package than Hua Che Bing uh, and so you pair him with William and you kind of have two really solid cavalry marches okay uh, the other thing is that if you look and you remember we talked about this William has a March speed debuff on his active skill and Hua Che Bing also has a March debuff March speed debuff on his active skill as well and he's going to be the primary and this is actually a more powerful March speed reduction than William so essentially what this means is for the target that you're hitting 
Williams March speed reduction isn't really going to do anything. In fact, it will, will actually do nothing. Uh, it gets overwritten by the general of agile cavalry. I already checked this in a battle report, uh, just a little bit ago. I did this, uh, where's it this March right here, just to double check that that is the case. And in fact it is now, of course, William is AOE. So, you know, you could make the argument that you're still getting some March speed debuff value out of that, uh, out of that active, active skill, even if he's secondary to what you being because it's AOE but I don't want to rely on that. So effectively by pairing Hua with William, you, you kind of miss out on some March speed reduction. I would rather have the March speed reduction split into two different commander pairs. That way, even, you know, they might both be hitting the same target, but it may be firing at different timings. And in that way, there's at least a chance that you can have multiple targets debuffed with the March speed at all times. Now it could be the case that Nevsky Joan is just the better play. Okay. And, uh, eventually most players will settle into a Hua Chibing with William the first. Um, this is, you know, a little bit of ambiguity here. And typically I don't like to include these ambiguous moments in these guides. Cause I'm here to like, tell you what to do, but Hua Chibing literally just came out. So like, we don't, we don't know 100% for sure what his best pairing is going to be. I am going to run under the assumption that it will probably be Joan, but there's a good chance it could be William. So uh, either way, no matter which one you run it, like we're splitting hairs here. Let's be honest with each other. Okay. Either way, we're micro optimizing. It's not going to be a big deal. It really won't be like, even if this is the right pair, like, even if this is the right, right way, or this is the right way, I would say the difference in this combination is like maybe 5%. Okay. It's, it's really not that big of a difference. If, even if we are wrong on the speculation end. So this is what I'm going to run. Uh, I know I've been rambling about this for a long time, but I think it's a big point of contention for the community right now. So let's just go ahead and get it out of the way. Now, once you've done this, you have two of the best open field uh, compares in the entire game. Okay. That's just the, that's the facts. You can decide, do you want to go for a third cavalry march or do you want to start branching out into other uh, troop types? I would recommend branching out into other troop types, but this is a cavalry guide. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that you're going to build a third cavalry march. Okay. Uh, and that's where Zhang Yu comes into play. Yes, Zhang Yu has been outclassed by Hua Chibing, but he's still pretty good in his own right, and he will stay as a primary commander that many players will continue to use moving forward. Who do you pair him with? That's the big question, right? Who, like, who, why would you even, what are you, what are you doing, right? What are you doing? Well, there's a couple things that you could do. First of all, you could slap Honda Tadakatsu behind him and bada bing, bada boom, you are a golden boy, okay? Uh, now you've got March speed reduction on all these marches. This is a double AoE. This is basically a double AoE as well, and this is a single AoE, but really, like, this is a solid march. Uh, now, I don't love Honda Tadakatsu, okay? I don't love him. I think he was great when he came out. I missed the boat on him, and now he's kind of old. I don't love it. You could do them in med, uh, but the problem here is that, uh, yeah, he adds some health and, you know, skill damage bonus and AOE to your, to your Zhang Yu, but, um, Zhang Yu really, I don't know. I think this pair is actually solid. Really. It's a solid pair. And if you're lucky with your keys, you might be able to get a five, five, one, one, med and boom, there you go. Now I will say with your Zhang Yu, you probably don't need to expertise him. It's going to be tricky to avoid, but uh, if we take a look here, this third skill does nothing in the open field. So if you can get a five, five, one, five Zhang Yu, that's probably the way to go. Now his expertise does give him some nice skill damage bonus but the extra 300 and whatever sculptures you're going to need to max out this actual useless skill. Like, is that worth it? Probably not. In my opinion, the other problem with Zhang Yu is that when he uses his active skill, you actually get 10% less March speed. So you actually slow yourself down, which really kind of sucks to be honest with you, which is the main concern with the Mehmed pairing. Cause like he doesn't have March speed either. So this is going to be kind of like a slow glass cannon, which you don't, we don't, I don't love that, but uh, it, it is something you could try. If you do spend money in the game, like let's say you have a uh Minamoto at five five one one or five five one five if you can get it then you could do something like this and honestly just have a single target like actual god like that would be like this is an absolute piercing unit like this pierces through basically anything and the debuff on the last skill on Minamoto is nice even at one like it's okay this would be good especially with the relic on Minamoto his relic is one of the best relics in the entire game you'd be giving an insane amount of stats to your Nevsky when it's double relic and I think this is a really solid lineup. 
Uh, most of you will not have Minamoto, so I'm going to assume that that is not possible. But just to give you other examples, you could do something like this. You could do something like this if you wanted to. You could do something like this if you wanted to, right? That would be also honestly another really good option. This is a really good three army lineup. You could even throw Attila into the mix here, okay? Uh, and you could do something like this and you know that's another completely viable option now uh this is the one that i would probably recommend the least because i just don't think people should be should be investing in attila these days he's very sort of um he doesn't really bring much to the battlefield other than being a commander that like people don't target so you're gonna be able to farm some kills but it's not gonna like there's really no support here at all um for your armies or for your allies so you know and, and there's no aoe either so i don't love this but you could consider it and that's going to be it for your cavalry marches okay however you want to arrange these secondaries is up to you depending on what you have do you have the 5511 med did you buy the minamoto do you have honda um again i don't love honda but you know these are different options that you can mess around with and see which ones work the best for you after that you're going to branch out away from cavalry that's just you, you gotta at that point okay that's the best my best recommendation to you uh, I'm gonna do this because I think this is like most likely what players would consider doing okay next I would say you go for Duliang. you just slam dunk it boom now you've got an insanely good pair for your YSG and you're good to go now the other thing you could try uh is potentially going for Boudica over your Duliang. Uh, the only reason that I would even consider this is because the debuff on Boudica is actually insane. She makes the target take 35% increased skill damage. And if you look at the rest of your cavalry armies here, like the bulk of your damage is coming from skill damage here. So like, I know that Jugal Young's AOE is actually insane, uh, but he is very slow. I've seen him in my current KVK him. He, he's very slow. Even with Boudica, he's very slow. Uh, so him with YSG is even slower. So you could consider doing a five, 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 one Boudica. It would be cheaper. Uh, you lose out on the double AOE. I mean, I can't stress this enough. The AOE on Jugal Young is actually insane. It's the best in the game. In my opinion, he outpaces Joan of Arc in my opinion. Okay actually insane but um i see i could see the argument for Boudica prime she's cheaper at 5551 compared to what would arguably you'd want an expertise with jiggly young and the rest of your armies are going to deal so much more skill damage to that single target Boudica is hitting that it might be worth it but i'm going to assume that you're going to do jiggly young uh, i'll leave Boudica here just as a side note and then eventually you're going to do your infantry march and that's either going to be guan yu with cpo prime guan yu being 5155 i know very hard to obtain but that's the way that you want to go with cpo eventually expertise or you're going to do sargon primary cpo secondary and i talked about this in my archer guide uh, the reason that you might consider sargon cpo over guan cpo is because sargon you can guarantee a 5551 uh if you're going to use them as primary or 5550 if you want to use them as secondary which is technically better but you do miss out on, on the skill tree the reason you would consider this over uh guan yu is because guan yu is feeling a little bit outdated these days even though he does have a nice aoe and having double aoe with cpo is insane this is arguably possibly cheaper than guan yu considering you can't control his skill spread and also uh it's a little bit more tanky and you could spread that odd debuff to aoe targets and make them take more skill damage which remember you're dealing an absolute insane amount of skill damage with this lineup so um it's up to you which one you want to go with uh i'm gonna say you know honestly at this point you might consider sargon over Juan, but i'll leave that up to you either one is honestly fine uh i think both options are great and that's gonna do it for the commander lineup and i i say that casually but like this is years worth of saving sculptures if you're a free to play player so just keep that in mind and also by the time you get into late game you know after you invest in like probably these four commanders uh there could even be new cavalry commanders in the game at that point right so like just keep that in mind uh you want to be investing very cautiously and only invest right before you go into a kvk where you actually need those commanders okay uh so i'm gonna go ahead and clean this up for you guys just a little bit and i'm going to assume that you're running something like this okay uh, I think that's a completely fine lineup and I uh, think it's Omni Arc approved. Okay, now let's talk about the progression of your cavalry equipment here in Rise of Kingdoms. And for a beginner's build, you want to get something like this. Okay, this is the full windswept set with the Vanguard set. Very unique for cavalry. And honestly, the Vanguard set is very very good the weapon gives you nine percent of stats even if it's not special talented and the greaves give you five percent of stats and because it's a set you actually get two percent bonus cavalry attack on top of it 
for free this is a a gift for the early game and cavalry absolutely slap in the early game because of the vanguard halberd you're gonna get so many bonus stats here and they're all tanky stats i love that plus having the windswept set is gonna give you bonus stats and bonus march speed as well which is great because your cavalry are already super fast but eventually you're going to want to trade that march speed for just a bunch of stats and when you do that you're going to change your helmet to the expedition war helm this is going to give you a bunch of extra defense and once you do that you're going to lose the march speed set bonus from the windswept set and at that point you can replace the chest piece with the purple chest and you're looking pretty good okay you're looking pretty good here you still have the two piece set bonus from the windswept set as well which is nice but eventually you are going to want to replace the vanguard set here even though it is so cheap and so versatile uh, you do want to replace it with the heart of the saint that's going to give you a really nice defense bump and because you lose the set bonus you might as well replace your legs with the purple legs now the purple legs give you a nice bump to your cavalry health which you desperately need especially with the talent and you can see here that we got a very tanky build here okay very very tanky eventually you'll replace the gloves with the Isset's sufferance uh with a special talent and that's a really great play I mean this is a really solid mid game uh build and really you can pvp with this in the mid mid game I've seen people use this in the late game to be honest with you this is just a really tanky solid build eventually you will replace the chest with the hellish wasteland chest which is going to bump up your health by an insane amount which we love to see and then you will lose the windswept boots to the set boots as well for even more health which is wild now you probably won't have this special talent on the chest or the boots uh it's unlikely because the blueprint restraint and the luck factor and the amount of materials you need but uh, even still like this set without those talents is super good and you can try to build multiple of these before you even replace anything else right because if you replace the legs with ash of the dawn you get a very small bump to your health and yes you could put an iconic crystal in it but realistically on a priority list to me that's pretty far down there and I don't really feel like you need to replace that much else now you could put the legendary helmet here and that would be technically an upgrade as well yeah I mean that's that's pretty much it man I mean once you do that then then it's like okay eventually yeah you'll you'll get ash of the dawn okay uh and eventually you'll probably go for this set gloves and then you're popping off I mean you really almost never need to replace the heart of the Saints unless you're a giga Chad well or you know you've been playing the game for so long and you want to just build a full legendary set you could do that okay that's what you're going for eventually but like I said even this set is like good enough to where like you're you're pretty much you're pretty much chilling and you can start to build sets for your other cavalry your other infantry your archers and all that stuff and that's gonna do it that is my updated guide for cavalry especially for new players free-to-play players but really just anybody who is focused on investing in cavalry like I said in my archer video really you don't want to focus on just one troop type you really want to chase the meta but I've had a lot of people requesting for this video so I figured I would deliver for those of you that are curious and want to focus your account on cavalry guys if you enjoyed the video and you made it all the way to the end drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton of helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video and comment down below your thoughts on the advice that I gave you guys here what are your favorite cavalry pairs what do you think about Hua Chi Bing and what should you be pairing with him I think that's a big topic in the in the community right now so I would love to hear from you guys and just a reminder that there is still the giveaway going on in the link the top link of the description so definitely check it out with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace